Hello, this is Josh Greenwood. In this video, I'm going to try to show you a few tips on how I like to uh, swing a hand hammer. Uh, the idea is to uh, move the metal very efficiently with as little effort as possible and in a manner that you do not do any damage to yourself. So, as we move on this video, I'm going to Try to slow it down and break it down so you can really understand what I mean. I set this anvil up to work with an apprentice so that he wouldn't be uh, afraid of damaging uh, a really good anvil. Also, I wouldn't be afraid of that. And uh, it was actually a little high for me, which you'll see in, in this next uh, sequence. Now, please notice the very long handle on the very kind of lightweight hammer. The hammer weighs about two pounds. This is a hammer I made about 35 years ago out of a truck axle. And uh, the long handle enables me to, uh, to uh, choke up on the handle or at times uh, really, really get back on the very, very end of the handle and get a very high velocity blow. Now, because the anvil is too high, probably an inch and a half too high for me, I was unable to, uh, to really uh, get back on the handle like I like to. You'll see. I have witnessed beginners who are so afraid of it apparently that they lean back like this. Then I've seen other people, sometimes experienced people, who are so intent that they hunch over like an old man. I advocate standing up straight so that you can give it the full hammer swing. The goal is to deliver each blow with the face of the hammer in exactly the right position to get the job done. Here the face of the hammer is absolutely parallel with the, with, the, with the top face of the anvil. And you can see that my arm is not fully extended. And you can see that if the anvil were an inch and a half lower, my arm would be more extended and I could be farther back on the handle. But that doesn't matter because regardless of how high the anvil is or how high the piece of work is, you adjust. You adjust the length of your, uh, the, the degree to which you extend your arm so that the face of the hammer is in exactly the right position to do the work. So here I am delivering a blow and I'm completely relaxed. And if you look closely at my hand, you'll see that I'm actually only gripping the hammer with my thumb and the finger next to my thumb. The rest of the fingers are kind of loose on the hammer. This is the key to the whole deal. I swing the hammer like a drummer swings a drumstick. The hammer bounces freely off the work and I don't get any shock from the blow. The hammer comes up and it flops back in my hand so that there's relatively little motion of the hand but a lot of motion from the hammer. The more motion from the hammer, the more velocity and the more work you get done. a lot of what I know from the old masters, people that trained with Samuel Yellen. They're all dead. They're all gone. Uh, on top of what I learned from them, I, I uh, invented or created a lot, of, uh, a lot of the ways I do things and, and so forth. And uh, this little video is uh, uh, a glimpse of, uh, of a project that we'd really like to do, which is uh, to make a video on basic hand hammering. Uh, which is, uh, after 40 years, uh, uh, still uh, one of the most complex and fascinating things I've ever studied. The problem is, is I don't know if anybody's interested in a video like this, and uh, uh, so this uh, video is presented to you as uh, the beginning of a conversation. Do the, the, the people out there really want to see something like this? And, and uh, if so, maybe I should uh, go ahead and do it.
Starting in 1975, we had the privilege and honor to do a lot of uh, major architectural ironwork projects. So uh, if you have anybody that uh, you know that needs a castle or a cathedral built, send them our way. If you ever come to Petersburg, we'd be happy to show you the shop and we can also show you some of the animals that we have for sale. Thank you very much.